Waters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, cockpit earlier at about 7 a.m. A group from the Welcome to Hashtag VH Road 2013. Today on Rapid, the Justice Department will probe media men who reportedly received bribes sourced from lawmakers' pork barrel. A former national security advisor says China is posturing to seize the disputed Ayunian Shoal. And Ukraine allows the use of force to defend its troops in Crimea a day after Russia annexed the region. Hello, I'm Ayi Makaraig sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, social news network. The Justice Department will investigate journalists who reportedly received bribes sourced from lawmakers' pork barrel funds. Justice Secretary Leila Delima says the department will look into the issue following an inquiry report that three prominent media personalities received bribes disguised as advertising expenses. The report named TV5 News anchor Erwin Tulfo and DZBB's Carmelo Del Prado Magdurulang. The third was not identified. The two allegedly received checks from one of the corporate bank accounts of state firm National Agribusiness Corporation or NABCOR. Tulfo and Magdurulang allegedly received checks worth more than 245000 each. NABCOR was used as a conduit of pork barrel funded projects under fake NGOs run by alleged pork barrel scam mastermind Janet Limnapolis. Delima says the department will evaluate the sworn statements of the NABCOR whistleblowers. Senator Cheese Escudero also says the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee should invite the media members to a hearing. Former National Security Advisor Roy, Roy Logoles says he's convinced China is posturing to seize a Union Shoal and Recto Bank, areas located within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. He says this puts the Philippine Marine Detachment there in grave jeopardy. In a statement posted on his blog, Goles claims China aims to seize the Recto Bank of Palawan. China demands that the Philippines remove from a union the grounded ship which serves as a detachment for the Philippine Marines. Chinese Coast Guard members recently blocked Navy commissioned civilian ships that were going to bring food and water to troops stationed in a union. Expect the arrest of another high-profile fugitive soon. President Benigno Aquino says an ongoing police operation will likely succeed. In a media interview Wednesday, he does not disclose the name of the fugitive but adds, If the current operation is successful, you will be impressed by the caliber of those that were caught and will be caught. The president's statement comes in the middle of criticism surrounding the Philippine National Police or PNP over alleged irregularities in the arrest of businessman Delphin Lee, one of the top five most wanted fugitives until his arrest on March 6. The, the most wanted fugitives include former Palawan Governor Joel Reyes, his brother former Coron Mayor Mario Reyes, former Dinagat Island Representative Ruben Ecleo, and retired Army Major General Jovito Palparan. The president also defends the PNP and shrugged off Vice President Jeju Marbina's accusations that influential persons tried to stop Lee's arrest. The government on Tuesday revises its target to reduce poverty by 2016. The Philippines originally projected that 16.6% of its 100 million people would still be living in poverty by 2016. But Socioeconomic Planning Secretary Arsenio Balisacan says the new target will be 18% to 20% of the population. Despite remarkable economic growth under the Aquino administration, the poverty rate remained at around 25% since 2003. Balisacan says the revised target takes into consideration the setbacks last year due to the wide-scale destruction from natural disasters. Will the Philippines become the dumping ground for toxic garbage generated by richer nations? If the government does not ratify the Basel Ban Amendment, it may just happen. In June to August 2013 alone, 50 container vans holding household waste from Canada 
were exported to the Philippines. Customs officials reveal the vans contain dirty plastics and household garbage including adult diapers. Placed in the port of Manila, the unclaimed vans started to leak. The Basel ban amendment will ensure incidents like this are less likely to happen. The amendment prohibits developed nations from exporting hazardous waste to developing nations. Netizens weigh in favor of the Basel ban amendment but say it's unlikely government will act soon. Joseph Tamayo says, Just hope the legislators can do something real, not just plans, theories, lip work, or propaganda. Mother Earth has been crying for help a long time ago. Angelica Peterson holds a more pessimistic view, saying, Don't hold your breath. The legislative branch is busy passing bills that establish our national vegetable while busily proposing ones that declare the national viand and the banning of Korean telenovelas. Spanish police arrest 42 people, including 20 Filipinos, in drug raids across Madrid, Barcelona, and Murcia. Police say they broke up two drug trafficking rings specializing in crystal meth, seizing 8 kilos of the highly addictive drug, and 15,000 euros or $21,000 in cash. Crystal meth is fairly common in North America and Asia, but has only started to appear in Spain over the last year. Police say one of the two gangs used a car import-export business as a front company to give the appearance their frequent trips around Spain, Italy, and Africa were legal. The police add their recent raids target those suspected of smuggling drugs into Spain. At least 250 minors were saved after officials arrest 14 men operating an online child pornography ring. Officials from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and the Immigration and Customs Enforcement say the ring had a wide reach and affected minors from 39 states in the U.S. as well as the United Kingdom, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, and Belgium. The website was a hidden service board on the Tor network. It was operational from June 2012 to June 2013, had over 27,000 members, and contained over 2,000 videos. The website shared webcam-captured videos of juvenile boys forced to produce sexually explicit material. A day after Russia defied the West and signed a treaty claiming Crimea, Ukraine warns the crisis is entering a military stage. Ukraine says one of its soldiers was killed in Crimea Tuesday. It calls the death a war crime and says Ukrainian forces will be allowed to fire weapons in self-defense. On Wednesday, Russian state media reports hundreds of pro-Russian supporters stormed the Ukrainian naval headquarters in Sevastopol, replacing flags on the mass with Russian flags. The West condemns Moscow's actions as a blatant annexation of Crimea, with U.S. Vice President Joe Biden accusing Russia of a land grab. Russian President Vladimir Putin signed the treaty with Crimean Prime Minister Sergei Aksyonov after more than 97% of Crimeans voted in favor of joining Russia in a disputed referendum Sunday. The signing came after Putin's fiery address where he attacked the West for crossing the line in Crimea. But Western leaders warn a tougher response is yet to come. With Russia allegedly risking expulsion from the G8 group of nations, U.S. President Barack Obama calls for a G7 summit next week in The Hague to discuss the escalating crisis. The hunt for the missing Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 enters its 12th day, with still no sign of the plane carrying 239 people on board. 26 countries joined the massive search, which covers an area roughly the size of the continental United States. Authorities focus on two vast arcs, a northern one stretching from Thailand to Kazakhstan and a southern one towards the Indian Ocean. Officials race against time as they try to find the flight data and cockpit voice recorders that are designed to send out pings for 30 days. The batteries are due to run out 18 days from now. Let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 8, 
The Rolling Stones cancels the first gig of the, their Australian tour after the death of frontman Mick Jagger's girlfriend L. Ren Scott. Scott, an American fashion designer to the stars, was discovered dead at her New York apartment Monday. The latest accounts of Scott's fashion business show it owed large debts and ran a loss of 4.2 million euros or $5.9 million as of December 2012. Reports said Jagger flew back to New York. He and Scott had been dating since 2001, following his split from his second wife, Texan model Jerry Hall. The legendary British rock group was set to play in Australia for the first time since 2006. At number 9. Google says it's working on a new Android platform for wearable devices. It follows a growing trend of digital wearable technology development with the first series of smartwatches going on the market. Tech rival Samsung released its own version of smartwatches called Samsung Gear. Designers say the idea behind the new system is to provide the most relevant contextual information, including messaging and voice recognition capability. And at number 10, 19 countries from all over the world will showcase their talent in the Street Child World Cup. In cooperation with Save the Children and various charities worldwide, the event is done ahead of every FIFA World Cup, aiming to change the negative perceptions of people on millions of street children worldwide. The Philippines' boys and girls squads trained as early as February, along with UFL squad soccer and members of the 2010 team. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you 8 emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that got the most clicks. In today's Mood Navigator, we have two stories on Crimea and Russia generating interest. Crimea now part of Russia treaty signed. 33% of readers are afraid, 29% happy. A related story, Putin gives historic speech accepting Crimea into Russia, 24% afraid, 20% don't care. But we also have lighter stories on the Mood Navigator. Google Android you can wear, 31% are happy. But the story that got the most votes is from our Balik Bayan section. Watch foreigners speak PH languages fluently, 58% are happy, 25% amused. Watch the videos on Rappler. All contributing to the mood of the day today, most people are happy. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Wednesday, March 19, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Ayi Makareganas, we say at Rappler. Tomorrow begins today.